Hey y'all, I'm James Wright, and welcome to my laundry room. Yes, uh, my wife wants a drying rack, so I better get on it. On the project today, we're going to be working with red oak and poplar. Uh, red oak for all of the rails, and then poplar for the rails between the rails. So, yeah, <laughs> red oak, three quarter by inch and a half here. We're going to cut these at uh, the length of, uh, I think it was two feet that we have it sticking out from the wall. And uh, we want to cut one for one side and another for the other side. And then I need to cut another two for the other rack because we're making two racks top and bottom. Once we've cut them to the same, we'll shoot them out and make sure that they are precisely the same length because it really doesn't matter if they are the same length. We're just going to get them close. Then I want to create a dovetail on the end, and we're going to have a long four-foot piece in the back, and then the two rails sticking out the, the two sides that are two foot out. And we want to connect them at that back corner with a dovetail. So I'm going to come in with the tails, and I'm actually going to gang cut those two at a time. Makes it a little faster and easier. Come down to the depth mark that was set from measuring the thickness of the other board that we're matching into. Then we can cut off the uh, the small non-tail, as we're just going to have one tail in the middle of this. And it's not really structural or strong, it's just a way to hold it together and, and keep it close. Uh, there isn't going to be an incredible amount of force on this, it's just right. something that holds it from moving around. Now before I go any farther, I want to make sure everything is marked, because it's incredibly important to make sure that A goes with A, and B goes with B, and we don't mix them up. To transfer the mark from the tails to the pin board, I'm going to set it up on a box because it's a bit taller as the one going vertical right now is four foot high, so it's up a little bit higher than I normally work with. And then we can draw down the tails. I'm going to kind of speed through the dovetail on this uh, as I've done a whole bunch of videos. And if you, if you want to see that, uh, I'll have links to it down below. But uh, dovetails are one of these things that a lot of people make a, a big deal about, but if you just cut them, they, they go pretty quickly. Uh, it's one of those skills that once you understand the basics, there really isn't that much to it, and they're not something that is overly complicated. They're just slightly angled cuts, and uh, they, don't, they don't take that much. And there's a reason that a lot of the historical world kind of views them as uh, something to be hidden. They really weren't that special. I'm going to take out the majority of the waste uh, using the chisel method. I could come in with a coping saw, but sometimes I just prefer to do it with the chisel. I find the coping saw is a little bit faster, but the chisel is more enjoyable. And especially when you get this last little block coming out, it just pops out and makes everything happy. And yeah, it's, um, it's a very pleasing moment. <laughs> Plus, you're going to have to flip it over with the chisel anyways and come back and clean up with the coping saw left off. So why not go ahead and do it from the beginning? Once we get that close, we can try them out. And thankfully, this one worked right off the saw very pleasing. And now we have the two rails in the back piece. We need to have all of the round rods between them. I have uh, rods that are three quarter inch by four foot long. They're poplar. Uh, and that's what the clothes are actually going to hang on. I'm going to put a little bit of chamfer on the end of the rails that stick out from the wall just to add a little more decorative, decorativity, decorativeness. Decorate. They're making them look pretty. And then we're going to make marks along these boards. I'm putting them at three inches apart. That's what my wife found that three inches was what she liked to work with. Uh, you might like about three and a half. Kind of play with it and see where you want them. I'm going to put a little dimple at each one at three inches down the, the bar. And I'm only going to put it on one of the two bars because I'm going to put one on top of the other one, clamp them all in place, hold them in the vise, and now we can bore holes through all of them. Uh, I want to make sure, because they are rather thin, I'm going to drill a pilot hole all the way through. You'll see that the first one I, I didn't, and uh, I, I had a little bit of splitting on that one, so I stopped it and drilled the pilot hole, um, especially with the auger bits having that, that snail on the front that uh, twists them out. And yes, I actually ran out of power on my, my drill, so of course that means I need to bring out the brace, right? Well, no, I just got a new battery, and it, it goes pretty fast. <laughs> That. Um, yeah, I, I do pull out the drill every now and then when the tasks get boring, so do it that way you will. But once we have all these holes, we can start gluing this up. I'm going to put a little bit of glue in here, and again, this really isn't terribly structural because these boards hold themselves together. It's a pretty tight fit. I'm going to put the dovetail in at one end, and then I can start driving in all of the rails along the, uh, along the, the row. Uh, with all the pegs in here, then I can put glue on the other rail, and wiggle them down together. And they're, they're a little bit of a, a fiddly mess to get in there. Uh, so you got to take your time and, and be patient and, and work with it. Um, I'm using some PVA glue on here. Normally I'd be using epoxy in this case, but I have got a bunch of PVA I'd like to use up. Uh, so we're going to wiggle these down in here one by one and let the glue drip all over the place. Because why not? And then you can use your force and your, take out your anger and 
pound them down in. And just like that, it's done. And through the uh, magic of cooking show cookery, hey, look, I've got another one ready to go. So I'm going to cut these pegs off. I let them go through just a little bit farther. So I'm going to uh, flush cut them off and then plane them all nice and smooth and pretty. Chant for all of the edges and make everything feel good so nothing snags on clothing. Um, do a, a light sanding on anything that's sticking out and make everything nice. Now, one thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to actually put finish on this, uh, which is one of these things I'm not quite sure how it's going to go because it's in the laundry room. Um, but in talking to my wife, she didn't actually want any particular finish on this. My, my natural go-to would be to put some poly on there. That's not going to hurt anything. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to leave it raw. The next thing we need to make are the verticals, and I need to make two of these that are the same length. Uh, the two drying racks that we're putting in, one is at 33 inches and one is at 66 inches. Uh, so these verticals are 68 inches long. And then we can drill a hole through the shelves and put a bolt through with a washer in between and lock nut the nuts on top. Uh, and this will be what they actually pivot on. And so the, the shelf will be hinged at the back and on this at the front. And the reason we're doing all of this is so that it will close up and go against the wall if we need the space. And yes, I'm using vice grips rather than wrenches because I didn't know where my wrenches were as we were still living out of boxes. Uh, so yes. For the actual attachment of it, I use magnets to find the screws in the wall and I can attach a hinge so that the bottom of it is at 33 inches and then I can bring over the shelf itself put it in place and the the vertical with the bolt holds it up so I can then run screws through into the the back side there repeat the same on the other side and then repeat the same on the top and just like that you've got a rack that sticks out from the wall and hangs and actually looks kind of nice I really enjoy this and it goes pretty well and the most important thing is that my wife likes it and if she likes it, then I like it. Happy. So yeah, uh, this is a fun drying rack and it can actually fold up and out of the way if we need the storage space. Uh, it's actually something rather quick and dirty. I want to eventually make a whole cabinet for it to go in, uh, but we'll see how that comes out in the future. My wife wants something that she can hang up. She wants rods that are around three quarters of an inch thick. Uh, there's all sorts of parameters that she wanted on spacing and size and we are able to make it happen. And so now for the things that she doesn't want to dry in the dryer, she can dry on the rack. Yes, um, there are things that my wife wants to do that way, so that's great. And some of you even, may even remember this thing, the uh, drying step, which we don't really need anymore because now she has a front-loading washer. But we've got a drying rack, so now she needs the step to get up to this rack. So a rather quick and functional project just to get things running in the house. I do like keeping the wife happy because, uh, you know how the saying goes, happy wife, you can buy more tools. And uh, yeah. This, this, this helps me with tools, so. I hope you like it. Give me questions, thoughts, ideas, snide remarks, throw those in the comments down below. I do like answering them. I answer as many of them as I actually can get to, and I do get to read all of them, um, but thank you for that. It actually helps out the channel. Anytime you like, comment, share, subscribe, all those things, you know how it works. Helps out us, helps us grow, helps more things happen. Uh, it's how the algorithm works. But if you want to go even farther, there's a bunch of names over here. Those are some of the fantastic, wonderful, benevolent, and gorgeous people over on Patreon, because between patrons and members, you guys sponsor the channel and you make things happen around here. Without you, we wouldn't be here. I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. <laughs> yes, I made a rack for my wife, uh, but she's actually happy about that because she's four foot ten, and hopefully the rack will stretch her out and make her a little bit uh, taller. Stink, my battery ran out of drill.